Will you please help me help God get what he wants? Do exactly as I do. Close your eyes. Harder. There you go. It's working. You're welcome, God. Christianity says Jesus will torment billions of people forever. That's a long time, and that's not enough. Don't swallow their lies or their tiny Jesus. Biggestjesus.com Yeah, size matters. So does God really need our help to do what he wants? I don't think so. Let's let him tell us in his own words what he's going to do. Indeed, our God is in the heavens. All that he desires, he does. Psalm 115.3 all that Yahweh delights, he does, in the heavens and on earth, in the seas and every abyss. Psalm 135, 6. Many are the designs in a man's heart, yet the counsel of Yahweh, it shall stand firm. Proverbs 19, 21. Assuredly, just as I have meant, so it will come to be. And just as I have counseled, that shall be confirmed. Isaiah 14, 24. For Yahweh of hosts, he has counseled, and who shall annul it? And it is his hand that is stretched out, and who shall reverse it? Isaiah 14, 27 All my counsel, it shall be confirmed, and all my desire shall I do. Isaiah 46, 10 Indeed I have spoken, indeed I shall bring it to pass. I have formed the plan, indeed I shall do it. Isaiah 46, 11. I am Yahweh, God of all flesh. Is anything too difficult for me? Jeremiah 32, 27. So it looks to me like God's got everything under control. He doesn't need our help. He's got a plan. He's going to work it out to its completion. And we can have confidence in that. But there are some things when we get into some of the specifics, because the passages we just looked at, are pretty vague, pretty general. But when we, when we start to look at some of the specifics of what God actually wants to do and wills to do, that's when people have a problem because it goes against what they've been taught, it goes against tradition, and it goes against Christianity as a whole. Is that going to stop God from doing it just because all of this opposition from so-called believers? No. Let's take a look at one very specific aspect of God's will that most in Christianity say will not be done. Our Savior God wills that all mankind be saved and come into a realization of the truth. 1 Timothy 2.4 Make note of the word wills, for this shows us that God wills that all mankind be saved and come into a realization of the truth. This is not just a desire, it includes his desire, but it is actually his will that has spurred him on toward action by sending his son for us all. God is the one who is operating all in accord with the counsel of his will. Take special note of the word will here. This is the noun form of the word wills that we just saw in the previous verse. This tells us that he is operating all in accord with the counsel of his will. So everything he is doing is in line with his will, which includes that all will be saved and come into a realization of the truth. So we see these great passages in the Old Testament that tells us God will do all he desires, all he counsels, all his will, all of his plan, because he is God. And who's going to stop him? Who's going to reverse his hand? Nobody is. But when we get to passages like 1 Timothy 2.4, I've often wondered if God has already told us how great he is, because he is, and he will do his good, pleasing, and perfect will, because it's perfect, why would he tell us that it's his will to save all and bring all into a realization of the truth and not do it? Does that 
mean that God is going to fall short of what his will is, despite the passages that we just looked at? Would that not make God a sinner? If he falls short of his own target that he has set out there. He wills the salvation of all and they all come to a realization of the truth. Now, I will admit there are times when God looks bad while he's in the process of bringing about his will, his counsel and his plan. When Jesus was in the tomb for three days, that made Jesus look bad. That made God look bad, but he wasn't done. And what Christianity has done has taken God while he's in the midst of his work and judged him and said, he's not going to do that. He can't do that. He won't do that. For some reason, he will not fulfill this vital, probably one of the most important parts of his will that there is, the salvation of all and bringing all into a realization of the truth. Let's let God complete his work. We're in the midst of the three days as Jesus laid in the tomb. Pretty hopeless situation. But God's not done. God has revealed to us through these passages that we looked at that he is quite unstoppable. His plan will go on until completion because he's the one doing it. It's not up to us. He is the one doing it. When we think it's up to us, that's when our faith falls apart. It's not. It's not up to you doing this. It's up to God. It's his plan. It's his power. It's all of him. So he is quite unstoppable, but Christianity has made him very stoppable. So they've actually told us about a God that is not the true God, because the true God is unstoppable. And a word of advice, if you have a God that you can stop, you need a new God. You need the true God, a new God, the true God, the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.